What's up everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video. Today we've got more information on The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as we ramp up faster towards launch. Now before we get into anything, I do want to say shout outs to everybody who's entered our Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED giveaway. Now it's still going on, we're giving it away on May 12th, all you have to do to enter is simply subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, notification bell, and check out the link in the description where we are voting on your favorite Zelda game of all time. Drop a comment there and a winner will randomly be picked on May 12th. Then I do have more prizes and more Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom stuff going on. So even if you don't win this one, there'll be plenty more, like a digital copy of the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and more. Now let's go ahead and jump into the actual content here with the game. So The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, obviously one of the most hyped games of all time, but it's been further expanded upon far more than The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And in the latest developer ass for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the developers talked exactly about what they were able to do in this game over previous games, including the confirmation of dungeons. Yes, dungeons, but not quite the dungeons maybe that you expected. It's a little bit different, and it's something that I actually called with the evolved dungeon theory that I had in a previous video that I did on the channel. So let's go ahead and jump into exactly what Nintendo had to say on the matter. Now, I understand the challenges and circumstances behind The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom development. You said that the setting is the same as that of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. However, now you can explore the skies above Hyrule. Does this mean that the world has expanded considerably? Fubayashi says yes. There is the skies and caves to explore now. These are also areas we weren't able to create in the previous title for multiple reasons. Doda says... Actually, the previous title, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, was originally developed for the Wii U, so there were restrictions in development. There were a lot of ideas we wanted to implement during its development, but we made clear decisions on what we wouldn't do in that game. For example, we decided that it wouldn't involve flying. Then Alnuma-san kept saying, if flying is out of the question, I want to dig underground. And we'd respond, oh no, please don't make us develop that too. They all laughed. Now also, Mr. Onuma said, it was just my natural response when playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like, man, I want to dig a hole right here. They also laughed some more. Mr. Dota also said, for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, we began by compiling and implementing ideas we couldn't include in the previous title. We wouldn't have been able to do so if we had made a completely new world. So developing in the same setting as the previous game was significant in this sense as well. Takizawa added that the entrances to the cliffside caves might be a good example. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is something that everyone is really excited about and it's the dungeons in the game. We've only discussed the skies, but this title has its dungeons too, right? Fubayashi says, yes, we haven't talked about the dungeons yet. They've changed from the previous game. For example, there's a dungeon that connects directly from Hyrule's surface. If you dive from the sky straight into the dungeon, you'll trigger an event. We think this will be a new experience that wasn't possible in the previous game. Dota said, We've made dungeons unique to their respective environments, so we think you'll be able to enjoy a wide variety of regional characteristics. Takizawa said, Making a wide variety was pretty challenging. The four divine beasts were the dungeons in the last game, and they shared similar designs. This time, the dungeons are huge and each carry their own regional look and feel, just like traditional The Legend of Zelda games. We think they will provide a satisfying challenge for players, they were certainly a challenge to develop, and they all laughed. So the last part of this massive Tears of the Kingdom Ask the Developer goes up on May 11th, right pretty much on the day the game drops. So many people obviously are going to get the official copies of the game. There is a New York midnight launch event that's happening. It's plastered all over Times Square. There is so much exciting and huge things happening with the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And this just goes to show you that this whole $70 DLC thing was pretty much a clown show 
from the beginning, and yes, I know Nintendo didn't talk about all of these things, but there's just no way with Monolith Soft, with the Zelda team, with these type of developers, which we knew were all on this game, there's no way they weren't gonna go into this with the mentality that we are adding a bunch of incredible things that people really wanted to see in the game and how they could really transform what the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild did and transform that into a completely different experience, almost making, like I stated before, the previous game seem like a tech demo in comparison with all this different stuff. Don't get me wrong, the original Breath of the Wild is incredible. It's still one of my favorite games of all time. But this game, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, is a dramatic step above, and I think that the gap between this game, Tears of the Kingdom, and Breath of the Wild is the biggest gap that I have seen for a sequel for a Nintendo title in a very long time. I'm trying to think of what games kind of come to my mind and nothing really pops up because most of the time when we do get a direct sequel, it doesn't have this many drastic improvements and changes and fan wanted things. Underground, dungeons, Evolved, Sky Areas, this is taking all the Zelda games that we know and love, the original Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, so many various different dope Zelda games and putting them all in one, forming something that's even stronger than the sum of its parts. So I am thoroughly excited to get into this, but we have more information on Tears of the Kingdom. Now we all know that Nintendo is holding a Treehouse event very soon here. So if you're watching it right beforehand, or even if you wanna watch it afterwards, if you're not slow on the game yet, or if you're still looking at some of the footage, know that the footage that's in the official Treehouse gameplay will not have any story spoilers. So let's go ahead and get right into what Nintendo had to say on Twitter about this. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is almost here. Don't forget to join us tomorrow at 6.45 p.m. PT for a live stream featuring Nintendo Treehouse live to see more gameplay leading up to the launch. They also state, which is really the important part here, guys, please note that these segments avoid story spoilers, but will show some gameplay and areas that have not yet been shown to help prepare players for the adventure to come. So I like the fact that Nintendo clarified this because not at this point, if you wanna watch it and you want to see a bit more, if you haven't been checking out the leaks and all this other stuff, then you're free to watch it. If you feel that it's going to spoil something for you in the game, then don't watch it at all. Now, I'm still contemplating back and forth whether I'm actually going to watch this or not. I'm not sure if I even want to because I want to have a fresh experience. I didn't look at the leaks when it comes down to it. I didn't look at all that. There was the art book stuff that I did peep into a little bit, but it was an art book. It wasn't the actual information. And I never really said any of that information in any video that I did or anything like that. So I still wanted to keep things a little bit under wraps just for myself so I can experience something fresh because I will be live streaming. I will be reacting live to all of my own gameplay when I'm streaming for you guys. So I'm not sure yet if I want to watch this, but I'm undecided. We're going to see, but I think that it's going to be great. The event is preparing to be one of the most massive launches for the Nintendo Switch, period. I mean, things are looking incredible for The Legend of Zelda. I'm so happy this franchise that I grew up with, that's decades old at this point, is more popular than ever. You hardly ever see anything like this where a franchise is three decades plus old, but it's somehow more popular now than it was at any other point by a very large margin. We're not talking about a million or two million units here. We're talking like 20 million units more in the next best selling ones, you know, or in that range. So this is incredible. That means a whole new generation and generations of kids have grown up, played Zelda and love it and more new fans are getting into the mix. So awesome stuff all around here. But we still have one more thing to talk about when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom and that is 
the sales. Now, I know I've discussed this before, and yes, the sales are looking very good. It's a top seller in various different places, but my man Croc O'Clock, he tracks Amazon sales, I think better than I do, because he actually goes over a lot of the different regions. I kind of focus in on Japan, I focus in on some of the places in Europe, obviously the US is a big focus, but pretty much Tears of the Kingdom is the best selling game everywhere. So pretty much every single Amazon bestsellers, you are seeing Tears of the Kingdom. Now my last update on this, I told you guys that Tears of the Kingdom is the best seller on the regular games chart. So that's above the Roblox gift cards. That's above the eShop cards, the PSN, the Xbox Live cards that so many people purchase because they don't feel like putting their credit card information in or it's a gift for a friend. I mean, obviously digital revenue is up huge across the board, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. So those cards are very, very well known and valuable and people buy them daily on the website of Amazon. So the fact that Tears of the King Kingdom, a $70 game is out there at the top is just incredible. It's just something Nintendo probably could have asked for when it comes to this system, the Nintendo Switch being this old in its life, but to have a release this big, that is huge. I've never really seen anything like this because even with the Nintendo Wii, back when that system came out and in its later years, you can go to like the late lifespan of it games like Super Mario Galaxy 2, that did not have the hype and fanfare and the sales of the original Super Mario Galaxy. And we saw that beforehand. It wasn't pre-ordering or tracking as well. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword was not pre-ordering or tracking as well as Twilight Princess at the beginning of the launch. And both of those games sold less. And it was very clear from the beginning that they were gonna do less. This, with Tears of the Kingdom, is absolutely going to blow out Breath of the Wild in terms of initial debut sales from what we're seeing. Obviously, launch title compared to way late in the life with 125 million units and over 100 million active users or people that have turned on and played in the past year. So the activity is still very high on the Switch, which beats out what Nintendo's ever done previously with their systems on its last leg, whether that's the Nintendo DS, the 3DS, the Wii, any of their highest selling systems. This is the most engagement and the most plugged in fans have been with a Nintendo platform six, seven years after the initial launch. So I see Tears of the Kingdom being a big, big driver for whatever Nintendo's trying to do this year, which they are prepping, getting ready for that next step, that Switch 2. But Tears of the Kingdom is going to be one of those games that really, really helps out. And I think that it's going to get new people in down at this point. And then once they're ready for the next system and then that comes out, then they'll be able to easily transition over. So it's not just with the Nintendo Switch, but it's also with the Switch 2. I believe Tears of the Kingdom will be on Switch 2 via backwards compatibility or its own game. And it's going to do well on there as well. So Nintendo's not going to waste this six plus year development time. They didn't do it with Breath of the Wild. They put that on both systems despite the Wii U failing. And uh, they're not gonna do that here. They didn't do it with Twilight Princess. They put that on both systems with the GameCube and the Wii despite the GameCube not doing as well as they would have liked. But the Switch obviously doing incredibly well and they wanna continue that momentum and have those games and those users transition over, which they've already talked about with migrating Nintendo accounts and more. So I absolutely see that happening going forward in the future and I absolutely love to see it. Shout outs to Croc for keeping track on all of that. So what do you guys think about everything? Let me know in the comment section. Also make sure you check out our previous Tears of the Kingdom videos. Also our giveaway as well that is going down. Link in the description over to the community page. Vote, subscribe, hit the like button, drop a comment here and also there. Enter in and I will be drawing that winner. And once again, if you're watching this afterwards, that's okay. We might have another system to give away and we'll absolutely have more giveaway and games. So thank you guys so much for watching. Check out some of the videos on the screen here. Link in the description and we'll see you for the next one. Peace.